Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on building a USB army knife. So by the end of this video, I'll show you how to load the firmware onto the LilyGo T-Dongle S3. So basically this is something that looks like a USB thumb drive, but it has a display, an LED, a button. It's got a micro SD slot for storage. It's also got a Wi-Fi radio. So we'll start by looking at the standalone attacks where all you have to do is give this thing power and it can do things like throw out fake access points, do credential harvesting with fake captive portals. You can deauth 2.4 gigahertz clients and pcap the WPA2 handshakes when they automatically reconnect. You can interact with the display and load custom animations on there, the LED as well. And then we'll get into more of our HID-based attacks where uh, this thing can basically interpret ducky scripts. So all of the USB rubber ducky payloads you can load onto here. You can launch them from the Wi-Fi interface remotely or you can have them auto run when you plug it into a machine. And then we'll look at more advanced attacks where it can masquerade as an ethernet device and is capable of PCAPing all of the network interfaces on a target machine, writing those PCAPs straight to the micro SD as well is covert storage where the first time you plug it in you can write a bunch of files to it and when you unplug it replug it back in it's going to show a completely different file system it's going to hide all those files that you put on there so super great for xfil and this thing costs about a tenth of the price of the usb rubber ducky so super cheap open source firmware all up on github so let's jump in Here's our bill of materials. It's very simple. We have the LilyGo T-Dongle S3. This is the version with the display. You can see they also make a version without the display, but the display is what makes it fun. And this is it. And to that, I'm gonna add a 16 gig micro SD card. That'll come in handy later. The instructions on the GitHub specifically call out not to go bigger than 32 gigs, and you need to be FAT32 formatted. So I'm gonna use this 16 gig. Uh, but next, we will plug this into the computer. Okay, so here on the IM Shodan's USB Army Knife GitHub repo, I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to the Getting Started Wiki. Click on Installation. And I'm going to scroll down to flashing with a web browser. You can also compile it from source if you want, but the web browser is quick and easy. So the first thing we're going to do is visit this page. And here you have to be logged in or you won't be able to download. I'm going to click on the top one here. And in the artifacts, if these don't link, make sure you're authenticated to GitHub. I'm going to go ahead and download the LilyGo T-Dongle S3 firmware binaries. And then I'll go back and back. And here I'm going to click on the boot app 0bin I'm going to click on the raw button and we'll save that. Now over in our downloads, I'll extract the zip. And now back over here, we'll go to the Space Hun web tool for flashing. Now I'm going to hold the button down on the T-Dongle and plug it into the USB. Then I'll let the button go and click connect. And here we can see we've got the JTAG serial debug unit. I'm going to connect. And of note is the first time that I tried this on an ARM Mac, I got a send serial error. Uh, I switched to the Intel Mac and it works straight away. So now going back here, I'm just going to set it up to look exactly like this. And now I'll hit program. Now down here we can see flashing 100% done. Um, so now I will go ahead and disconnect the USB and we'll jump back over to the bench. Okay, so at this point you can insert the micro SD and power the thing up. You'll be able to connect to the Wi-Fi interface, do manual keystroke injection, things like that. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and get a bunch of payloads set up. So I'm gonna do that by going to the USB Army Knife GitHub and I'm gonna download a zip of the repo. And now I will unzip that. And now inside that folder, inside of examples. So now I'm gonna go through and delete a few of these that I'm not going to install. So this is the list of payloads I'm going to go ahead and install onto my micro SD. You can see I've already inserted the micro SD. So basically what I'm going to do is go into each one of these. So with the covert storage, we need to unzip this file. And I'm going to copy that disk image and paste it onto the micro SD. And then I'm going to grab the auto run.ds and I'm going to paste that onto the micro SD. And I'm going to rename that to covert storage.ds. And the reason is because if you rename your DS files, you'll be able to launch them from the web UI. If you rename any of them auto run.ds, they'll automatically launch when you connect the USB. So going back here, I'll do the same thing with evil AP. I'll copy Apple and auto run.ds. And I'll rename this evil AP.ds. And I'll copy both of these and paste them. I'll copy both of these paste them. I'm going to rename auto run. Do the same thing with progress bar. 
Okay, so Rickroll is going to have a naming conflict. So if I go back to my SD, I'm going to rename my 1, 2, 3, and 4 here as 1 underscore progress bar. And then I'll open up my progress bar.ds with notepad. And I'm just going to update the file names in here to match. And I'll save that and close it. Now I can copy the Rickroll and rename. For Wi-Fi connect to AP, if we take a look at that, here you can configure an access point and a password to connect to. So you want to set this to yours if you want to be able to connect your USB army knife to your existing Wi-Fi. And the last thing I'll do is back in the root of the code here, I'm going to go into the test folder and I'm going to go to features, hid, and I'm going to copy this one and I'm going to rename it notepad. All right, now I have all my payloads loaded onto my micro SD card. So I'm gonna go ahead and eject that and we'll jump back over to the bench. Okay, so now we can remove the uh, dummy SD card in here and replace it with our SD card loaded full of payloads. And now just using a USB battery, I'm gonna power this thing up and we'll see the device is running. We've got a bunch of version info there. Now here on the iPad, we can see that it throws up an access point called iPhone 14. The password is password, so we're gonna go ahead and connect to that. And then in a browser, we'll go to 4.3.2.1 colon 8080. And here we can see our web interface for the USB Army knife. So a couple things to note in settings here, you have all kinds of different things that you can configure, like the access point name, you can configure the Wi-Fi password, you can configure the USB device type, um, you can change the vid and the PID from defaults to something else. You can tweak all the settings in here. Uh, here you can throw commands at it. You've got a file browser to see all the files on the micro SD. Um, back in status here, we've got run script, and so you can see all the ducky scripts that we just loaded. So we'll start with sweep LED and execute that, and we can see that the LED is going to go through a bunch of color sweeps. And if we do stop payload and clear, we can see that it has cut off. Now if we run progress bar, we can see it does a nice little progress bar animation with matching LED color changes. So you can change the four PNGs, just replace them with whatever you want. You can add more to it by modifying the ducky script, uh, but this gives you nice little animations on the display. Uh, so we'll do evil AP next. And so now that evil AP is running, we can see that there's a Wi-Fi network called Apple free Wi-Fi. So we'll connect to that. And here it brings up a login page. So if I put in, you know, test at test.com and this is test pass hit next it just brings us back here but now if we pull the micro sd out and look at it on the computer here we can see this evil portal zero text file got created on the micro sd and that'll increment the number each time you run this so you can run it over and over and if we open it up you can see test at test.com and test pass so it will capture the credentials that get entered in and write them as a text file to the micro sd all right so the last attack that we'll look at from the battery before we get into host-based attacks is the wi-fi deauth and crypt capture and basically if i execute that we'll see that it tells me to push the button to start so i'll flip it over and push the button and now what it's going to do is deauth all of the wi-fi stations in range and then pcap the handshake when they reconnect over wpa2 so we can take that pcap and attempt to crack the wpa2 passcode and you'll see it's going to give a little status bar indicator here i think it runs for 10 seconds that's all changeable in the ducky script as well as the gate to push the button but once this is done let's load it up on the micro sd card back in the computer and take a look okay so looking at our micro sd card here we've got ea poll zero and ap zero those pcaps should contain the handshakes for when the deauth clients reconnected that should be everything we need to load them up in wireshark and dissect them or load them into another tool to uh, further analyze them okay so up until this point we've been looking at kind of standalone attacks that are wi-fi based or interacting with the screen or the led right now i'm going to execute the notepad.ds and we're going to see uh, basically an example of a ducky script attack so this is hid keyboard injection um, basically what this means is you can take all of the ducky scripts that are out there and load them straight onto this platform and run them just like you would with a USB rubber ducky. Um, you can name them something different and be able to launch them. So you can load up a ton of ducky scripts and launch them all from the web interface interactively over Wi-Fi 
or you can name them autorun.ds and they will automatically initiate when you plug in the USB army knife. Okay, so the next attack we're going to look at is called Covert Storage. This is a pretty neat one. Um, so basically, it looks for this file called First Run in the root of the micro SD. If that file doesn't exist, it'll create it, and then it'll go into Attack Mode Storage, which basically mounts the micro SD as a storage device. Uh, the next time that you plug it in, it'll find the First Run file, so it'll hit this Else block, and instead mount disk.img as storage, showing that. So you can basically write files to the micro SD, and then unplug it and when you plug it back in none of those files are going to show up it's going to be transparent so this is a great xfil technique for covert storage so now if i execute the covert storage ds and again the ideal way to do this would be to name it auto run.ds so this just happens automatically but we'll see that this drive attaches and if we go over here and look at the usb drive we can see all the files on the micro sd so if i make a new text file called loot.txt and i can go in here and say this is the loot and we can save that and now if i unplug the usb army knife and then plug it back in and because i didn't name this auto run i have to uh, rerun the covert storage.ds and we see the d drive shows up and if we look inside the d drive we can see that it's actually that img file uh, that's full of cat pictures so you can roll your own img file and just replace disk.img with your own to decide what shows up in here now if we unplug the usb army knife and mount the micro sd card on the micro sd we can see we've got loot.txt and this is the loot all right so the next attack that we're going to look at is the usb ethernet pcap and we can see that we're in serial plus hid mode so in order for this attack to work we're going to have to go into the settings in usb device type we're going to set a custom value and we're going to change it to NCM and hit save. We're going to see we're still in serial and hid. What we're going to do is unplug the USB army knife. I'm going to go plug this into the computer and on a power cycle it will drop into NCM mode. So let's jump over to the computer. All right now I'm just going to execute the USB PCAP and so we don't get any visual indicators on the screen it says starting PCAP and it'll take 10 seconds and say PCAP stopped. Basically that time delay is configurable in the ducky script so you can make that uh, last for a really long time and capture a whole bunch of network traffic but now that the pcap has finished let's go ahead and remove the usb army knife and we'll load up the micro sd card and here we can see usb ncm0.pcap 394 bytes so it was grabbing whatever network traffic was happening in the background of my laptop pinging out to the internet uh, but this is really neat because you can just plug it in and pcap all the network traffic that's happening for as long as you'd like write it all to the micro sd and go back and analyze it later all right, hopefully at this point, you guys have a USB army knife all set up. You know how to interact with the display, the LED, the button. You've got a micro SD loaded full of payloads. It's time to get out there and start having some fun. So as always, stay tuned and thanks for watching.